Last night, however, we did get the body down. We started the field autopsy. And now we got to go back to the car. We got to get the bolt cutters or wire cutters or whatever it is so we can disconnect the belt from the neck. Uh, it's going to be messy. It's going to be messy. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go and check it out. Uh, I'm hope, hoping for the best because, like, uh, you know, Harry Dubois, Raphael here, probably not all that great when it comes to uh, fine motor skills. Not at this point, though. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Ooh, pick up the radio. So, we know we're looking for the toolbox. But let's just hear what he says about the machine. This is the Coupris Kinema, my motor carriage. You can use the toolbox and the radio if you'd like. Wait, what? Toolbox and the radio? Motor carriage, motor carriage. Something bad with the motor carriage. A dark lump rises in your throat. What's the sinking feeling I have with the words motor carriage? Nothing, nothing. It's probably nothing. Forget I brought it up. Please proceed with the carefree lollygagging. Oh god. Someone died. Someone died in a motor carriage. Can we turn it on and drive somewhere? No, I'm afraid not. We have a murder case on our hands, remember? Oh. So a joy rides out of the question. <laughs> oh, jeez. This be what must be what woke me up when you arrived in Martinet. The infernal noise. Yes, sorry about that. The Coupris Kinema does have a rather distinctive engine sound. Yeah, and it's right out there in the open. He says it with very badly concealed pride. Do all policemen have such cool motor carriages? The Coupris motorcar does provide most of our patrol vehicles, yes. But this is different. This is a sports model. Really? Is this a sports model? You're right. I didn't take you for a motorcar enthusiast. Do you also like Tip Top, Detective? I adore it. Tip Top's the racing, by the way. We read about it in a book. Hmm. Yeah, I adore it. Really? Well, I'm not indifferent on the matter either. Huh. I'm not indifferent. Look around the cabin. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Let's pick up the radio and see what's up with it. The frequency tableau lights up and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast oh, far and okay. wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st prison here. I'm putting him on. What? Alice, why do I need to talk to her? Okay, I mean, sure. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. Come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker copy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. This is the officer from the 41st Precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. Let's be cool. Let's be cool, because she seems cool. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. Oh, we've got to report something. Here we go. Just a second, officer. She puts you on hold. The static crackling sounds... Softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you. 10-2, ten 10-5. Ten this is 41st. Uh, come in. Over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. Hi, this is me here. I work at your station. Ten four. What's your status? Over. It's not, it's not good. Ten eighteen. Ten twenty. Over. God, just talk human to me. These numbers mean nothing. State your message, sir. Over. I need to report my badge missing. 
Dire need of a financial assistance. No, no, we're gonna do all of it. Um, we're gonna do all of it. Okay, let's say badge missing. 10-9, repeat message, over. My badge, I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. Ten four message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 10-20 to the captain, over. What the hell does all of this stuff mean? Him. What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Say nothing. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the best seller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. <laughs> Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name oh, no. of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. <laughs> They're making fun of me. Hey, Rado, what up, what up, what up? Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Like, authority wants me to defend myself. I don't give a shit about authority, man. Tell them to stop. This is serious. Ha ha. Officer's lost his badge. Ha ha. Like, I'm the first cop to ever misplace it. Can we just move on? I'm gonna report it and be done with it. 10-4, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! Who the hell's this guy? Chester McLean. What's going on? Super Cop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Holy crap, what are these guys even- Like, come on, dude. What the hell? Do they have nothing better to do? Enough with this. I have other things to discuss. 10-9, come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult to hear, for him to hear you. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun, too. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun, too. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Convince them that you didn't... No, no, no. Say nothing. Say nothing. Oh. Uh... 10 you're breaking up. 10-9, repeat, please. Over. The chance is getting lower. 10-9, come in, officer. Over. It's getting lower. <laughs> come in, officer. 10-9, repeat message, please. <laughs> oh, Did you misplace your firearm? Over. <laughs> Quit the call. The silence is almost deafening after you flick off the switch, severing the connection. <laughs> that did not go well. I guess the important thing is that you followed protocol and reported your lost items. That did not go well. Did we need anything else here? Uh, I'm not going to pick the radio up again. Let's get the toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and that was bad. into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. We want the chain cutters. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. You can do good work with these. Cut chains, locks, and ropes, especially belts. Okay, the pry bar. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. Heavier than you'd think. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. Mm, flashlight. It's robust, weatherproof, and well-made. Police issue. Blue. Lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. Okay. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers. And there the are steering levers. Floor. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. Your fingers waste no time closing around the handle. Clutch disengaged. Release the handle. Clutch drops. Right foot yearns for the familiar touch of the accelerator pedal. You have synced with the machine's mechanical circulation. Do I know how to operate this machine? How are you, my friend? The smell of freshly treated leather. The lack of dirt and dust on the dashboard, and a neat little brush in the cup holder, all seem to be whispering. I'm good, cherished and cared for, in the hands of a tending owner. Where have you been? At the bottom of the sea. 
Oh shit. What? So strange. The machine is not on the bottom of the sea at all. It's right in front of you. Well kept. Why did it say that? Oh no. Mine's at the bottom of the sea. Mine is. That's why it said that. Oh shit. Hey Yambix, what's up? Zidana, good evening. Because it's lonely. Just like you. Seaweed and strange fish around it. Limpets clinging to the carcass. The sound of the streets above. Do I know operate it? You feel an uninterrupted connection to the mechanics. Wait, so I can? Release the clutch and squeeze it again. Of course it's only in your head. Of course it is. But it almost feels as if the clutch handle is gently squeezing back. Okay, release it. The handle is pulled back. Somewhere deep inside the drivetrain, the disc is mated to the flywheel again. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Click the preheater, tap it. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch, labeled heat. Now, now, that's enough fun with the foldable headlights. I know they are mesmerizing. They are also fragile. I'm not going to turn it on for you again. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. We got what we wanted, didn't we? What is this over here? To think I haven't even gone anywhere past this point where the car is right here. I just left it. Some great tectonic forces cracked the pavement like an eggshell. Maybe a sea monster did this to the plaza? Could have been caused by an earthquake. I bet all of this has something to do with me. Hey, what up, Yambix? You got bad news. For your boss, you're getting audited. Okay. Your salaries on paper are only 23% industry standard. So like, hold on. That's a very weird thing. Like, do you mean it's only 23% of the industry standard, which is like ridiculously low? That means it's like a fifth of the, well, almost a quarter of the industry standard. Uh, is that what you're saying? Or do you mean it differently? All right, we got the cutters. Let's see. The rotting man lies on his side with his eyes looking straight through you his body is supine and open to intrusion by autopsy the lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath okay let's cut the belt this could get messy mm -hmm. he it shows the point as much precision as you can please should i be doing it see my pig is gonna fuck his head up <sighs> Oh God. Ah. Uh. No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. Oh no. Twenty. Twenty-eight <laughs> percent. Can I? Can I get out of here quickly? Okay. 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 But it's physical instrument, right? I'm not going to level physical instrument, there's no way. I thought it would be rather... Uh, accuracy, you know? Yes, I'm Kuno's pig, I agree. Okay, look for a good spot. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the yeast. That's gross. The knot is the weak spot. The chain cuts... Oh, there we go, 72. There. Steady now. Like a flower arranger. Two cuts and it should come loose. I'm going to say this first though. Yes, I'm Kuno's pig. I agree. You are? This pig is Kuno's. Okay. 83%. After some deliberation, <sighs> you sink the cutters into the knot tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together. Sweat forming on your brow. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. 
The suspension point is in the back of the neck. The lieutenant kneeled closer, running his finger along the dark red groove until there's a gap. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Write it down. Chest is intact. Normal contour. Abdomen is protuberant. Pelvis intact. Genitalia... No! <laughs> Let's get out of and see! I fucking knew it! This is clearly what they've been waiting for, ever since the autopsy began. The lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. <laughs> Was he enjoying his moments of death? Thing is... We had the, the idea that he was having fun, right? That was sort of part of the initial inspection we did. Does it look like he was enjoying it? Ah, yes. Your hunch before. We can have a semen analysis requested from processing, if that's what you meant. Y yes, processing. Science. That's what I meant. No, I was trying to get a psychic read. Yeah, yeah, science. Mm -hmm. Just write down that we request an analysis. The corpse with his pants down does not have an opinion on the subject. All he has is genitals and a deathly odor. Inspect the genitals. Oh my god. Hey, on paper you get an hourly wage, which together are below minimum. Minimum is 700 with this year, but you get 450 on paper. For accountant, average salary is around 1.7k, which isn't realistic because government calculates average salaries only from companies 50 plus employees, like 95% of the countries, uh, companies in your country are below 50. But from what you talked with a government agency, they want you to collect correct last year of salaries and pay more taxes plus a fine. But does that... Okay. So do they want you to get more salary as well? Or is it just that they want it on paper and they just want their taxes and their fine? So do they want the taxes and the fine or do they actually want your boss to change something and give you more money? Hmm. That's the question. Inspect the genitals. The dead man's penis is average sized, congested from the downward collection of blood. The testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is greenish. Marbling is present around the crotch. Write it down. Add semen sample. Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. Hmm. From wounds sustained over two, maybe more decades, dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. Scarring is extensive, way more than a law official's. Mm -hmm. We have a real museum here. Of battles, wars. Write it down. Last item. Hands. Pick up the hand. Let him work alone. Let him work alone. No, pick up the hand. His flesh is cold. I see. Pleased to meet you. Where are you from and what's your name? My name is? I'm only fucking with you. I know where you're from. From Cappadocia. And your name is Il Corbo. What can I do you for, Il Corbo di Cappadocia? It's good to hold your hand. Did you like it when I stroked your hair? I did, Kobo. I did. Reminded me of when I was just a small boy. Before this happened to my face and my body. You did me a kindness there. We should do this more often. Be close like this, I mean. Yo, I don't know if that's a good idea, given the current situation of your corpse. Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. I'm flattered, though. Were we expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Alright, okay. More taxes and that's it. Right. Okay. But it's not like a wake-up call for your boss to actually pay you guys a little bit more. Ooh. 
That's all for the external. Well done. What next? He buries his face in his sleeve. Is he feeling it finally? Internal examination summary. Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? We don't even have a joke. <laughs> nope. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Higher bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. You hear cracks as the lieutenant moves his sharp fingers inside the flesh, like the creaking of an old house at night. Huh. His throat! The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Respiratory system. Back hunched as if in prayer, he begins to pry open the dead man's jaws. Both hands are Oral used. cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen. Hemorrhaging present in mucosa of the lips and mouth. From here, it looks as though the clown-faced man is screaming. The tendons of his jaw are torn apart. Hyoid, ripped from the force of the lieutenant's hands. Look inside. No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again. Straight in that mouth of his. Look deeper inside. Oh no! It's hard. Once more, you taste stomach acid in the back of your throat. That was close. A contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from your stomach and into your mouth. You're forced to swallow, just to keep looking. Inside, you see darkness. Just a mess of meat and darkness. Oh, come on. There are ancient mysteries down there, Kobo. Ask me later. Hemorrhaging present in mucus. Oh, ask me later. You see, we're still going to come out here later when old Kim goes to bed and we're going to grab those boots. Hepatobiliary. N.A. N.A. Don't we have anything? Uh, are you a hepatobiliary expert? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. I don't think so. Neither am I. And that's it? That's it. Okay. Same for toxicology and serology. NA. Both? Unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there. The completionist in me wonders if there's something we could still do. We already have one test as per regulation. And we already requested semen. Pigs requested semen like it's no big deal? <laughs> I'm not even interested in these boring mulkers anymore. I haven't sucked him off for anything. <laughs> What the hell, man? Yes, better leave it at that. More important. Change it to toxicology. Mm. Change it to toxicology. At a request, then. We'll know if drugs or poisons remain in his blood. At this stage, I doubt processing will find anything. Even if he was brimming with it. Oh. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Okay. Boss sits on a pile of money, thinking about buying an office. Stingy boss, but overall, she's the best boss you can wish for. Don't have to work nine to five hours. If you get the job done, flexible with times off, regularly pays for lunch for the whole office at least twice a week. That's amazing, yeah. No, if it works for you, then it works for you, and that's good. And I wouldn't worry about it, and I wouldn't, uh, you know, make a make a stink. I don't think I'm going to vomit in his mouth. I'm going to come back later for some sweet whispers. Gastrointestinal. He breathes a sigh, approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. 
digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. Write down, omit, write down, keep the voila. What's next on the list? Description of injuries, summary. Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one too. Be thorough if you want maximum results. Okay. What about the injuries we, injuries we inflicted? Oh, so we inflicted them? It's a team effort, man. You mean the spin stabilized munition from a kill A990 Mesolodo lodged in his lung? Uh. That was not a team effort. I just missed my shot. Uh, also, let's not mention it. Muddy the water. Okay. Keep it minimal. So back to the. I agree. Waters are muddy enough. See? These pigs are fucking corrupt. He nods approvingly. Why don't you fuck him if you love him so much? Now, injuries. Bite marks? Head, chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. Okay. And your opinion, officer? Beneath the description, there are two boxes waiting to be ticked. Opinion fatal injury. Non-fatal post-mortem. <sighs> Non-fatal. Agreed. Next injury. Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury. A stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. Oh. Okay. A perpetrator. At maximum velocity, fucko! Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. <laughs> Write it down. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury. Two okay. boxes. Non-fatal. Right. Next. Ligature mark. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Think for a moment. There's time. Don't rush. Why? Why do they want me to think? Do you guys think it's maybe non-fatal? Post-mortem? I think so. I think so. So, so basically, I think they hung the dead body up here. The lieutenant falls silent abruptly. He is deep in thought, eyes fixed on the bright red ring around the dead man's neck. Why do you say that? I'm serious. I don't think this was an injury. This was the injury that killed him. Okay. Why don't you think it was fatal? I arrived at this through the psychic arts. I can't shake the feeling he was doing something else when he died. Why weren't his hands tied? A big man like this? I would tie his hands when marching him to the gallows. Honestly, I'm not sure there weren't marks on his wrist. That part got blurry for me. The stench. But you are right, I was ready to call this. Now I think we should leave it empty, at least for the time being. Yeah! Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. How did it, how did it go? It was a, an irregular field autopsy. We did not establish cause of death, which is supposed to be the goal of an autopsy. But, personally, I do not see this as a parameter for success. Mm. We requested a test to be run on the genitals, but was the règle. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks, if we are lucky. I will not hold my breath. What else? We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. 
Hell yes, man. Hell yes. What now? I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg. Okay. For processing. He looks at the dead man one more time, then the slip of red paper in his hand, then the corpse again. He's thinking, did I miss something? You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Hmm. 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 I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. Shit. Perception. This is it. Whoa, I can put two in there. Oh, the bump on the head! Yo! Maximum! I don't know if I should spend that. 72% is like really good, dude. What do you guys think? Should I just roll 72? Or should I click again? Because that's going to push it up to like 90. If I click again. And I'm thinking, like, for real, the... Perception is always going to come in handy, right? Could also be his hand is be tied because he did this to himself. That's possible as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I don't think so, man. I don't know. I don't know. There's got to be something fishy here. What's our experience looking like? Oh, dude, we're already most of the way to the next level. We put more in perception, okay? Not just for this. Oh, it's 83. Your arm reaches out and your eyes close, as if by their own volition. It's dark all around. What? You feel cold, dead flesh through the latex glove. It's right under the palm of your hand. What is this? What have we got here? His face, his cheeks. His nose, his fat, swollen lips, like a rubber spider, your gloved hand crawls on his features. Everything is silent all around. Crawl up his nostrils. Do it. They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. Shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Try something else. Touch something else. You're not far. It'll come to you. Keep crawling. Fingers in his mouth. Oh, he's actually doing it. Look. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. You're on the right track. Play with it. This feels right. The tongue moves freely in the cavity. The <laughs> mucus of the mouth is slippery, fragile, even through the latex. From the soft meat, teeth are budding. Hard pearls of bone in the gums and in the back of the mouth. Here we go. Can you feel it? You're so close. Rip his jaws open now. Look in. Okay, do it. A vision of black and dark red death pried open by your hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from his throat. And there, in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate, you see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, almost vanished. No larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius, the edges appear darkened. Oh, shit. An abrasion collar. This is what we're after. Abrasion collar. Abrasion collar. He said it. He looks in. There's a pen in his hand. His notebook is open at the copy paper. Kuno is silent. Touch it gently. A black trickle of liquid 
runs into his throat from the wound. Put your finger in. Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up, tissue damage, wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth, right into his brain stem. Oh my god! What the fuck is happening? Yeah, man! I want to know the same! Ah, oh, shit, see? Feel around first. The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. Oh, shit. Someone like, uh... Coat hangered the guy. Your yellow fingers slide into the remains of the limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. Whoa! The onulations of the limbic system have ended. All is quiet. There's a cavity between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Fucking cavity, see? Quivering with awe. Oh, shit. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, but the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. Wriggle in. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper until you feel it on the tip of your finger. What do we feel? Ice cold serrated metal. Oh, its shit. edges cut right through the latex and into your finger. Oh my god, I can just pull it out. I feel a solid object right under the skull. Can you can you get to it? Inspect the skull first. There's a tiny crack. A protrusion in the cranium, right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it from the inside. This is kind of gross. The object I love it. that is in there stops just short of the skull in the encephalus, knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. This is the irregularity you felt before, the one that was too tiny to register consciously. Yeah, we felt it from the back, from the outside. It's just a little bump. We have the makings of a uh, very small exit wound here. Forget about the fucking exit wound, Beano. The pig is wearing him like a fuck puppet. <laughs> True. Her voice is absolutely sizzling with excitement. 97%! Do it! Yeah! Oh shit, that was close to failing though. He's actually doing it, he got it out. What do we have? What do we have? You pick the object between your index and middle finger. It feels sharp, like metal. With your face twisting from pain and concentration, all you need to do is just... Slowly pull your fingers out. The inside of the head feels cold and smooth, like a glove. Sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop. Your hand emerges from the mouth. The garden glove is covered in blood right up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower. A blossom made of lead. Oh, shit. Fucking beautiful! They're enjoying this. A bullet. He marks a small bag with evidence. Drop it in. Wow, I'm a super cop. The bullet falls in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, A non-caliber rifle, some kind of brittle alloy, fractured on impact. Keep it as a gift. No, no, you deserve it. We can log it later. He drops the bag in your hand. It feels light. We need to add an item to the injury list. Injury number four. Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate, back of mouth. 
So, so someone shot him. Did he, did he shoot himself, or did someone shoot him? High velocity, temporary cavity in brain tissue, small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound? Just nod. Opinion, fatal injury. I'm still not sure. Look at your hand quizzically. We have extensive tissue destruction away from the one track. We have a bullet. Agreed. And one last thing. We can now fill in injury number three. Ligament mark. Opinion non-fatal. Post-mortem. Treatment. What? I said that already! He's proposing the bullet was the real cause of death. And the hang him an attempt to conceal this fact. Yeah, it was all treatment. Yes, and the belt around his neck, the hanging, even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. Dead daba doop doop. Agreed. I have had my doubts for a while now, since I saw there were no signs of struggle on his hands and no claw marks on his neck. There have been other signs too, small thing. We were right not to assign hanging as cause of death, mm. as the perpetrators expected we would. Mm. No such luck for them. We didn't fall for it, he thinks. There's pride in there. We, we didn't fall for it. I did this. I mean, it's a team effort, right? He's my partner. Okay. Who would do this? Why would anyone do this? Maybe the bullet holds more answers. That's true. Yes, we should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. Who would do this? That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them just a little easier. Why would anyone do this? To hide something. The real killer? The real motivation? What really happened here? I think I need to wash myself. Oh, you really, really do. I am glad to hear you say that. Your room in the whirling and rice should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it. Oh shit, it's late! What happens next? We put him in a bag and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. The body bag should contain the odor for the duration of the transport. I would drive him to processing, but it's too late to do that today. I'll do it first thing tomorrow. No problem. One more thing. This was really good work, detective. Yeah! Okay, tell me something, dead man. Shoot, loony Rony. At the autopsy, you said you have more ancient mysteries, sir? Uh... Oh, yes, Kobo Milobo. In the gift horse's mouth. Tracts and wakes and waterways. Ancient materials buried. He's talking about the bullet. Where? Just a small gulp away, my beloved Kobo. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. Let's drag him to the kinema. Also, try to remove the boots. Dreams. Let's try to remove the boots. I thought we decided to leave it to processing. Let's not turn this into some kind of circus. Damn it. This is turning into some sort of mega puzzle. Leave. Let's see if we can leave the body here. There we go. He wants to talk. We should think about calling it a day, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager. We should take care of that, then. I think I have the money now. This is money, right? I'll also take a room at the Whirling. One cannot get much closer to the crime scene. He's proud of you for getting your act together and finding a way to pay back what you owe. Okay, let's go. He's never going to be able to smell out. This is going to ruin Kim's car forever. Hopefully. Hopefully. Then you'll give it to me. I need a replacement anyway. Mine's at the bottom of the ocean, apparently. I obviously went in like some... What's going on here? Is this disco lights? There are so many people here. 
Oh, Jesus, I really want to sing that karaoke, man. Can I help you? Uh, about the money. Yes, have you got it? Here you go. How much do I owe you again? Drinks? 30 real. Here you go. Well. Yeah, sorry for the trouble. Great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. That's good if experience. You continue to stay here. I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. He's not sorry about his behavior for your sake. Now that you have money, he really wants to make sure you're not angry with him. Mm. I'll unlock the electronic lock to your room. All the doors lock automatically at 9 p.m. Wait. Oh, okay. It's already half past 10. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. Jesus, what? This is extortion. I'll take a room here too. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do? Nah, we're good. Okay, let's uh, call it a night, I guess. Should be a hobo. Should I be sleeping outside? <laughs> Shit. Oh, I can interact with a bullet. Let's not do that now. Okay, so I put a lot in perception. I'm st I'm still happy with that. I'm still very happy that we did that, because well, you know. Now I want to think. Inland Empire seems to be like really really good. Reaction speed seems cool. God, I don't know. How many points do we have? I liked empathy. Also. I need to, I need to Google what these things do. I don't know, man. I don't, like, I don't know. Should I Google it or is that ruining this? Like, is there, is there supposed to be like some mystery involved here? Because I have one here that I've unlocked. Now I can put another one in here. Hmm. Why are the pictures so deranged? The door is closed. Knock again. And still nothing. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance. He doesn't like where this is going. Let's get him to retire for the night. Go sleep. Yes. I want to talk about you. Me? I you. don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Well, we work together. We work better if we have more rapport. Hmm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? I don't want to spend too much time here. You're wearing glasses. That's correct. And? You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this. But you can't quite muster enough testosterone. Just observe it. I guess you don't need glasses, then. You don't look like other people around That's here. That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul. So was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. What's Seoul? It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. Okay. You're only making it sound uninteresting. You're barking at the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seoul. I'm a regular Revachelier. He's glad to have shut down your question. Hmm. Tell me a secret. No. Oh! Ask again. Your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something is paralyzing them. You're pretty sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's eyebrow. What? The eyebrow is exercising psionic control over you. No, it's not. It's like you're locked down. What? What's happening to me? Something the matter, detective? What's going on? It's like you're a puppet in his hands. What? What was that? The lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow, and you seem to regain control of yourself. 
Do you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? You know when you're thinking? Do you ever have conversations with your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. How do you, you know, think? You're saying your brain never just chimes in with advice or warnings or anything? I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. What a boring life that must be, huh? Also, I haven't said hello. Hello, Nemo. What up, yo? Sorry, you've been here for a while, but I just took it for granted. That's where his conversations with himself take place. Oh, so it's the same thing. Good. Let's change the subject. Okay, let's go in the room. I need to get back out, though, after this. This is the door to the room you redecorated. Good night, Lieutenant. Just a moment. We should talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. Where's the real stuff? Dude, it's late. Let's go. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Now then, we should talk about the investigation. But I also feel you're a bit hazy on the RCM. Our role here, our rights, our jurisdiction, basically. He lights a cigarette. I didn't know you smoked. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh. Oh, man. He looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. <laughs> uh, how did you get so cool, Kim? You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. It would be easier to simply quit. Yet, were he to quit, he would lose the cool factor. This man relishes his cool quite a bit, below it all. Okay. Do you have any more? I apologize, but I only brought one with me. I have exactly one cigarette every night while going over my notes. Right then, the debrief. Yes. It's been a long and even full day. How did it go? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. Our inspection could have been more thorough, as it always can. But we have some leads we can follow up on. Then you shot him in the chest, which wasn't ideal. But we did manage to get him down from the tree. So as they say, all's well that ends well. I just wanted to make sure he was really dead. Right. Then we performed the field autopsy on the victim. We found some things we can really work with. Moreover, you found that the hanged man wasn't just hanged, he was also shot. That was some excellent detective work. I think I really did good with that. And you managed to locate and pull out the bullet, so we can get ballistics, make of the gun. All this is invaluable. Least I could do given my past mistakes. Unfortunately, the body is still decomposing in the yard. We should take care of that as soon as possible. And there's still work to be done at the crime scene. Now, for the interviews. That's my forte. Unlike most cops, I understand how important communication is in our line of work. Very important indeed. Well, we conducted an interview with Evrard Claire. He wasn't particularly forthcoming with useful information, however. People arrive. Hey guys, Disco Elysium Pog Champ. Hey, Daoist, what's up, man? Yo. Thanks for the 26 months. And yeah, man, Disco Elysium has been pretty poggies. I'm, I'm actually still in shock about that being PogChamp. PogChamp's great, man. That, that little, like, snake or lizard mouth is great. It's just kind of weird still that that's actually PogChamp. Yo, man, thanks for the 26 months. Whew. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now... I'm sure I can get him to tell us more. Claire also helped you, how should I say, remember your name? That's a relief. I don't know how I feel about my name. I want a different one, one I haven't ruined yet. You can look into the process of changing your name after <clears throat> we finish this investigation. Oh my god. We didn't talk to the Wild Pines rep. We really must do that tomorrow. Above all though, today was exhausting. 
What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard Prison 41 practice? I don't like to waste time, you know. My mind moves fast. The rest has to try to keep up. I'm training for a long distance run. That's how we roll. I don't know why I do the things I do. It's impressive, especially for a man your age. And in those hills. Nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. Goes with the orange. He looks at your shoes and smiles suddenly. So what are our powers exactly, the RCM? They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Rebachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental system. Jeez. A thousand? Why not more? Wouldn't it be an easy one to abuse? Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. Okay, what else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station cold sleep. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. Okay. Wait. How can you be sure to arrest the arrestee will show up? You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. Okay, and if someone resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in your watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. What happens to the people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Couron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. Okay. Who makes the rules? The coalition government and the moral intern, more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. His case is absently fixed on a window below that just went dark. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government formed in the RCM. Say nothing. Silence. A great comment to such a conundrum. Uh, the moral in turn? What? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. Moralist International. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. If I didn't know, how could you describe them? They are a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. Jesus. So this whole world just feels completely foreign to me. What do they believe in? What do they believe in? They are Dolorians. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. Dolores Day it sounds like the lady from um, Westworld. Okay, what's their symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Mm. Something ominous. Something like the dark blue, serious color of the early night sky above. Who was Dolores? A historic figure? The author of the modern age? You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. They are Soviet-era republics. Ruled from without, ruled from Moscow. I, I must tell you the one thing that I've just been completely in the dark about is the political stuff in this game. I just don't understand any of it. They start talking about the historical figures, the communism, the humanism, the symbols, what they believe in. Dude, I glaze over completely. I'm sorry. Give me another dead body with a bullet in its head and I'll be okay. This shit? Nah. Nah. No, I don't think I will. What do you think of them? The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. 
And it doesn't look like that's about to happen. It is more than that. There's some kind of affection in him. Affection? You like them? Yes, I did when I was younger. In my 20s, I considered myself a moralist. A blue forget-me-not, a piece of the sky. They're not all that bad. Oh. But the years have changed that. I don't know what I believe in now. I have an opinion. No, I believe in the RCM. That's enough for me. Do you? I, I do? On second thought, I don't have an opinion. <laughs> Forget about it. Things are bad out there. We need them here. Giving us... Uh, the right to police Revishal. They've done an awful job. Have you seen the place? We are stooges of the world's biggest... Bourgeois organization protecting bourgeois rights. Mutter silently. Immigrants, liberal kipts. Dude, now what the hell? Okay, I don't have an opinion. We need them here, giving us the right to police Revishal. In fact, we would need them even if you didn't think that way. We are in what is called the twilight of international law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the MI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. That's okay with me. Then you will adore Martinez. For many of these people, the Union especially, vigilantes is precisely what we are. Personally, I don't enjoy it much. Okay, let's just look into the night. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me, he thinks. This little stick right here. <laughs> they really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. It's different in land, in Jamrock and the GRIH. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the Union. To the company, not daring to come here more often. This place has fallen between the cracks, the jurisdictions of our two precincts. Yeah, I remember the game Metro. The competing forces in the Metro with different stations lined toward different factions. Metro is like a more extreme and less intellectual version of this. They in decay, trapped between hammer and anvils of forces, ideologies that come from the outside. Yeah, okay. I mean, I understand that. I do. Knowing their own powerlessness, knowing their inability to act. Only that all have failed them. There are no solutions. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. I get that. I get it. And, and, and to the people here, there's no direct effect. Like, I mean, what the hell? These guys are so far away for them. And in the Jamrock and the GRIH? We run this city. West of the river is RCM land. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. I hope our investigation will help improve the situation here. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. He is very tired, but the dark circles under his eyes make him look younger, not older. Wow, thank you. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. Jesus, I got so many skill points. Let's go. Can't he walk himself inside? Come on, Kim. I still have to go pull those boots off the body. See you in the morning. Is he watching me leave? Bye. Wait, wait, not here, not here. Yes. Okay, quickly. So, oh my God. Thank you, Dave. I hadn't saved once yet. Dave is my guardian angel in Disco Elysium. My God. I do not think that I saved once. <laughs> oh shit. House notes, what's up? Yeah, well, I hope you guys are doing good. I will never learn, man. 
Yo, uh, Jeff and Rachel sent this game, so it's either Deathcore and Peblas, or it is, I'm not sure it's them, or it is Professor J, or it's someone else entirely. It could be Rachel from way back uh, when Kiak was still with us doing art and stuff. You remember that, Rachel? Could be her too. I don't know, man. There's so many different people that it could be. Speed train, Kuno, leaving station. Necromancer pig. That shit was dark. Going in there like that. Oh, brutal shit. Tell me, Kuno dies. You gonna pick one out of his brain like that too? Kuno's gonna go out in a hail of bullets. Gonna look like a fucking porcupine. You really don't remember Rachel? Uh, so we, Rachel won a competition once. Uh, and I sponsored Kiak to draw some art for Rachel. And he drew her like a cool treasure dungeon type thing. It was a long time ago. It's like a really long time ago. Do we have a Twitch name? Yeah, she used to be Rachel something or other here on Twitch as well. I don't remember. I don't remember. I can probably go look at my old VODs. I still have a few of them on my hard drive somewhere. But, but, but it was, her name was something Rachel. Something. 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 <laughs> I don't think it was her. I don't think it was her. No, it's really not that important. But Zidana really loves the game, so there you go. There you go. Porta Rosa, a side alley of the Boogie Street Spearhead. A young man in his early 20s approaches patrol officer Emile Mullins and asks for a cigarette. As officer Mullins reaches in his coat pocket for the pack of Astra he just purchased this morning, the man shoots him point blank in his chest. Breathless, the patrol officer collapses in the gutter. His right hand is grabbing the armor on his chest. The bullet didn't pierce it, but he can't breathe. On the pavement, the patter of the perpetrator's feet growing distant. Bleed, pig. Someone opens a window and says, but Emil cannot see who. His sight grows dim with pain. I'll be there for you, Kuna. Yeah. There's a dreamy look in his eye. Oh my god! He saw you find the bullet. Dude, 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 dude. A 58% chance to figure this little shit out. We gotta take it. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Oh, you're going too soon, man. We're gonna fix Kuno. We're gonna fix Kuno. Hold on. This is it. We're gonna take one more point in empathy. I'm I'm safe scumming this for Kuno. Fuck does Kuno care? 72. I don't even have to save scum. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Wait, what? Interesting how Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something something very bad she came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before yes kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name kuno s was the one who wound him up and directed him oh shit all in all kuno respects madness you cannot hope to outdo her on that front you must win yourself a few minutes with him alone okay 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 here we go here we go yo Yo, 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 yo. Separate them. Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you whispering about. There it is. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. Don't make him look bad. Okay, so empathy's working with me here. Now... 
it would make him look bad if you say she's terrifying and crazy because he's rolling with her. Both of those are bad, but if you say, listen, she's trying to control you, then you're trying to help him. It's okay. The pigs trying to pit us against each other. Not gonna let him do that. That's it. You let him off the line. That was a bad, manipulative thing to say. You should understand. I got you this far. I couldn't get you all the way. Shit! Try to fuck my Kuno! <laughs> Try to fuck my Kuno away! Me and Kuno are tight! We ride for life! Try again. He's on your crime scene. Bossing you around. Shit! And he's been here for some time too. Oh! This he said before she's his girl. Out. You have to get more out of him. He could be useful. But I failed! Think you can turn down the Kuno for a moment? Let's talk. Kuno, listen. I know this boundary pushing thing is new to you. Kuno, you must have seen all kinds of things while throwing stones here. You want to help bust a murderer? Oh, no. <laughs> what are you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna load. I'm gonna load. Kuno, they've almost made you a snitch now. Ease off, see. Kuno always takes the. Oh, okay, 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 okay. We're gonna load. We're gonna load. I wanna do it again. I told you. For for Kuno, I save scum. Kuno's important. Kuno is so important in this. Fuck, does Kuno care? He's on your crime. How the hell am I failing a 70%? It's a 70%. That 30% is not supposed to even exist, man. Don't joke with me right now. Fuck, does Kuno care? He's on your crime. Oh! I think someone's messed with the numbers, dude. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Fuck, does Kuno care? It's not Kuno. Ha! It's Kuno S. Kuno S. She came all in all. Okay, here we go. Kuno. Fuck you, whispering about. Here we go. He's whispering too. I'm listening to Zidana now. She knows Kuno like no one else. Fuck you, f whispering about. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper. Okay. Let's whisper, pig. This is it. Okay. Got him. But be careful. Okay, you can so Sedana said, call her terrifying. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. She's terrifying. Crazy. You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him. Kuno, I'm fucking warning you. You're gonna get us into shit. Oh, shit, dude. She understands what you're trying to do. She does. She's gonna have to come over the fence. Yo, see. Did Kuno not tell ya? Kuno told ya. Kuno talks to whoever he wants. Yeah, Kuno, more power to you, Talk buddy. Big. Kuno's got it under control. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her, so she can't read his lips. You said she's insane? What's up with the language? Is she your sister? What do you mean she smoked someone? You think she has anything to do with a dead man? I don't think so. I'm trying to decide what I should do. How are you dealing with all of what do you okay, what do you mean she smoked someone? Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like actually a killer. His little green eyes are fixed on yours. What if she has? That would explain things. She's too small to overpower someone. Maybe she's got my gun. Are you getting this? You think I'm fucking telling you a joke here? How hard do you think it is to kill a fat ass? Sweet talk him, then knife him. Uh. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Come on, she hasn't. I knew you pigs were too naive for this shit. Good thing Kuno's got her under control. Kuno keeps her calm. He feels eyes on the back of his head and stops. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. Shit, this there is crazy. something searching in her eyes. You think she has anything to do with the dead man? Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Oh, where were you? Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. Drama. You said she's insane? Yeah. She's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho. K 
Catburn and shit. She does the real deal. Whoa. Yeah. He watches the <laughs> sinks in. What's the real deal? Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig. You don't want to know. What's the language? Fuck knows. She says it's the song of her people or some shit. What people? Crazy people. The fucking Nakis. I don't know. Some things are too awful to dwell on. The Nakis and Runkaris might be some kind of defense mechanism. Is she your sister? Fuck no, she's not my sister. She's just a stray who got in. Like a mad dog or some shit. Stray? Yeah, she was just there. Okay, at the apartment building. What was that, tree knife? The little one twists her neck, looking at the building. She was in the hallway, dripping wet, by the fucking shoe rack, in the dark. Shit, why was she wet? Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor, too. She was there for three days, in the corner, every time Kuno went out. How did she get in? I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home, and she's sleeping under the desk, under a pile of clothes, like a dog. Uh, what about your parents? Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there, or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. Kuno? Kuno S? Two of a kind. Why is she called Kuno S? Did he name her? Because she fucking looks like Kuno. She does, doesn't she? You don't know her name? No one knows her name. Kuno told you this shit was psycho killer. How are you dealing with this man? How's Kuno dealing with this? Kuno's dealing with it just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with this. Waving your gun. Mad dog shit. Kuno remembers what you did there. Kuno's got this shit under control. You need backup. I'm here for you. Wait, what do I say here? What do I say? Just okay, kid? Or you need backup or professional help? This seems like another important one. Although, it might not be that important because no one chimed in to say anything. You know? This is an interesting one. I don't think one is going to happen. Yeah. I think it's two or three. It said don't make him look bad. So, it's like, I just say, okay. But, I, I mean, the thing is, I feel like I need to say something to get on his side. You know? Like, I don't want to be non-committal about it, then he thinks I don't care. Yeah, let's do it. Listen, listen. See, it's Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C, you fuck with Kuno. You threaten her, you wave your gun around her one more time. Try to take it away. This is what it all comes down to. Uh. He needs you to take him seriously now. Okay, that wasn't an important one. Never mind. No, this is the important one. This is the important one. That one was nothing. They, they will have all led to the same place. I am going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her. Sneak up on you later and fuck you up. Do you understand? Huh. Who are you kidding? You can't take down a man several times your size. You'll end up dead yourself. I'll just say I can respect that. I think I should just say that. Not understood, just I can respect that. I bet he can take me out. I took myself out swinging at him, so yeah. Alright. Now we can do business. Business? Yeah. What do you want? Kuno can hook you up with... He starts no longer whispering. Don't look him up with shit, Kuno. See, relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect mm. the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. Hey, <laughs> cooker. See, it's tension and release with Kuno. Now we releasing. The pan buying shit, that's on now too. 90% discount for Kuno's pig. Kuno can flex. Kuno flexes for hobos. Kuno sees you're in need. Whoa, those are really good pants. I'll take that shit, dude. Yeah. Here, pig. We're full now. Performance buddies. Kuno unzips his jacket again, pulls out the pants. 
It's brand new. Kuno could already see you soaring through the air like a fucking eagle. Pigs in Kuno's debt now. Money debt. I, I don't think they're the dead guy's pants. No, I think he stole it from the truck outside. What about the errant? Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. That's where Kuno gets his lightning on. With his dad. Problem is, Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's got to throw his dirty popo man at it. Okay, okay. Dirty popo man is you. I get it. It's Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Who's your dad, Kuno? Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishow. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks too. Look, as long as his dad is not the big guy on the bridge, I think we'll be okay. Are you sure you can take on the most violent man in Revishow? In your condition? Okay, how much material are we talking about? Like half. Half of what? A baggie, but like in this vial. What? That's half a gram, sir. Half a gram? Yeah, half a G. Want it or not? That's not very much material at all. Fuck you talking about half a G? This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it because there's barely any. <laughs> okay, I've made up my mind. Okay, who knows listening? I'm going in there guns blazing to get that speed because I need it. I'm going in there, but not for the speed. I'm going after the most violent man in Rivershall. I'm going for justice. I'm a knock. I'm going to confiscate that crap. I'm going in there for justice. I'm a knock, Kuno. Lie. I need the speed. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going after the most violent man. Sure, whatever. If you survive. Make sure to bring that shit back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. Kuno's violent dad's got Kuno's key. So you need to fuck your way in there. Go to the pier side. Bang on the door till the cleaning gimp lets you in. That's how Kuno does it. Then you go to room 12 and kick down the door. Police violence style. That's what Kuno does. And then it's action time. You're locked in the room with violent fuckhead. That's it. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have his shit. Okay. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Jesus, Kuno. That's amazing. Now, let me have these boots quickly. It's saved. Let's have these boots. It's finally the time for the boots. Is decomposing visibly now. Every hour, he looks less like Did I talk to the rich guy? And more like a pile of I, I spoke to a rich guy in a container. I didn't save scum to get to him. I just got it on the first try. 3%. <laughs> it's kind of stupid, actually. Actually, no. It wasn't on the first try. I I went through there. Then I forgot to save. Then I died. Hey, dude. Hey, it was bad. It was bad. It was real bad. But I don't, I haven't, I've not been save scumming, really. Like, I'm just letting it roll. Whatever I get, I get. Except for the Kuno thing. Hey, Leary, what's up? Yeah, I did see the preview of the character creator for Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm pretty keen for that. I'm most likely going to be having a look at uh, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen sometime before in the lead up to the release of the second one. I'll most likely play the second one as well. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm keen. I'm keen. Okay, try to remove the boots. Here we go again. The body is reluctant to let go of the boots as though it were its last bit of dignity. Wow, <laughs> Kuno's little sneak pig's back for the booty. Yeah, fuck it to pieces for us, liar cop. Pull on the left boot. It feels like the leg is going to come off along with the boot, but you're able to get the boot to move a centimeter or two. Pull on the right boot. It's not completely useless. You're able to reveal a little more of the putrid polymer sock beneath the boot. Oh shit. Just relax. This is easy. This is happening. See? 
The corpse doesn't care if you try to take his boots. He doesn't need them. He's probably glad. Step on the corpse. Okay, pick up the body and try shake the boots off. Step on the corpse as you pull the boots. Try to twist them off one by one. This is the right method. It takes some time, but eventually the boots come off with nasty slices of polymer sock stuck to even bigger pieces of skin and rotting flesh. Can I clean them? Look, he's skinning the fucker up good. Puko style. Hell, keep at it, pig. Take stock of the damage. The legs look like they've been clawed at by wild animals. As for the boots, you can't possibly do anything with them until you've cleaned and disinfected them thoroughly. I knew it. I knew it. I wouldn't have put it past my character to just shove them on, though. Hey, Ocreeper, what's up, man? Yeah, man. Listen, listen, listen. More disco today? It's really good. It's really good. I hope you're really good. Yes, these absolutely need to be washed before. The stink is incredible. Didn't the Whirling have a kitchen? Oh. See you guys around. I got a late night stop to make in the kitchen. Bum, 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 bum. This is going to be gross. Is there anyone new to talk to here? It's, you can't talk to any of these people. Oh, and the lady's gone. This industrial gas-powered stove has been used to prepare food for many hungry hostile guests. There are several pots and pans on hand. Oh my god, what if I boil it? Getting the corpse residue out of these boots is going to require patience. And also a huge pot full of boiling water, soap, and white vinegar. Okay. Uh, cookware? A commercial pot draws your attention. This is super it's gross. It's very large. Gigantic, even. It could be used to make enough stew to feed an entire city. And also to boil a putrid pair of death boots. Hey, Zevis, what's up, man? Yo. Cleaning supplies? There is a variety of soaps and bleaches in the cabinet to the left of the stove. There is also a bottle of white vinegar in the cabinet next to the fridge. Do both. The delicious smells of cheap soap and vinegar waft up from the pot. All right now, chef. Light up the stove and boil them. Add water and the boots to the pot. Bring it all to a nice boil. The strong smell of vinegar forces you to step away from the pot. The water slowly comes to a boil. Wait. Strips of polymer fabric and human tissue separate from the lining of the boots. They float to the bubbling surface. Beautiful. A two-course dinner of rotten flesh and hardened ceramic. Fantastic. Hey, it's going really well. We've actually made awesome progress today. The boots look cleaner and cleaner. Those bits of human flesh are beginning to look cooked. You can smell it too. Just like beef stew. Oh, come on, man. That's it, chef. The boots are as clean as they're going to get. Steam dense with the smell of strange meat disappears into the vent above the stove. Dump the stock and flesh stew and examine your new boots. A pair of real beauties. The boots are shiny, hot, and reek of vinegar. Just perfect. <laughs> Master Chef out. Okay, now I've got new pants and new boots. Oh, they give minus one composure. I don't even want that. Oh no, dude. Because they, they, they take my composure. My authority is going to go up. What is authority even going to do for me? I don't think I have any authority. Wait, is author authority two? Yeah, dude, I'm not giving up composure for that shit, but I should probably... What do my, what do my shoes do? Wait, where are my shoes? Here. No, they give me composure. No, man. I wish I could use these, but... Oh, well. Better that I don't use them so that there's no evidence. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. 
I'm sure they'll come in handy, yeah, but not now. Okay, is it time to go sleep? Finally. It's it's 11 minutes past midnight. This is not the cleanest bathtub in the world, but it's cleaner than you are right now. Ah, that soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. I want to live forever with the corpse smell, memento mori and stuff. No, no, run a bath. bathtub slowly fills with water. The water beckons. Okay, Andres, close your eyes and submerge. The water is only lukewarm. This is such a bad idea. Comforting, like amniotic fluid. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks, like sad duckies. You feel nice and lonely. And so, so tired. Take the cans out. Now you are alone with your thoughts in the tub. But it's easier than being alone with your thoughts outside the tub. Imagine something. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. Then, houses along a narrow street. A video rental. Darkness on the planet's curvature. Linger a little. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. Okay, let's get out. The water line recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your still moist skin. That's fantastic. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Holy shit. Oh, oh, let's put the tool in our hand. Hold on. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. I can retry this at some point. Yo, explodes. Hey, good evening. What up? Nice to see you. Let's do this. The chain cutters slip out of your hands as you attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know one thing for sure. You've probably never been a plumber. True, 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 true. I can probably do something like this. Let's see. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Wait, maybe we can take this out? A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face. Put skill points into interfacing. I don't know if interfacing is worth it. Like, to fix the faucet? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth putting points in interfacing for that. How many points do we have? We have two. I'm, I've been saving them. I've got five interfacing already. I don't think I need to spend another one. Uh, what I want to do, however, is I want to see about these things. So, I've got... Uh, Mazovian socioeconomics, indirect modes of taxation, and white mourning. How do I know what this is going to give me? Hmm. I have so many slots here that I could be using. What's the solutions? I can't look at them. I can only see once I've done it. So it's like you, you can you can see the problem, then when you research it, it shows you the solution. I don't know. Maybe I should do this one. Whatever, whatever, man. Whatever. Let's go. All right. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it 
Can I fix this? I doubt it, but... The window stands broken in its frame. Wait, assess Cold the damage. In. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. I broke it. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. What did this thing? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Wait, what am I doing? Something you've done before. Assess the size of the impact. This is so cool, man. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. Something like a gun. The shoe you found on the balcony fits oh. the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. I forgot about the shoe. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Maybe it wasn't me. You mean someone else took your shoe off and smashed the window with it. What a stupid thing to do. What if I was trying to hit someone? And maybe, just maybe, you succeeded. We'll <laughs> never know. Or maybe you were trying to smash your own reflection in the window pane. Oh, possibly. That's kind of depressing. All right. It's the time bed to sleep. is cold and not. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. Can you believe we actually finished a day and in this game? Sleep. And then sleep doesn't come. What? But I want to sleep. Obviously, you're in bed with your eyes closed, but it's not happening. Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Check the pillow. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. Smells of alcohol and sweat and grease. What about the blanket? It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. Uh, how far do I think? Maybe a third of the way. Uh, if I had to guesstimate, maybe a third of the way. A bit tense in the muscles. Relax. Under your thrumming eyelids, you see a dizzying array of colors. You won't get off this carousel quite so easily. Roll over. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Who killed him? Something to do with. What was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images, images start forming. I'm not muted, what are you talking about? You muted. That's me. With a disco ball above my head. Shit. Do you remember the scent of your childhood? What is this? What it says on the can, Harry. Answer the question. I remember nothing. Do you remember your wife's hand on your face? What is this? I'm not answering before you tell me who you are. I was left or I left. Did, do you guys think I, I think I was left? That's right, funky baby. And you just stood there. One hand on the bottle and the other on your dick. Watching her go. Let it all be dragged away from you. Tell me, 
Where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? <sighs> this is going to be really depressing. I don't want to come back. They were only cramping your descent into the abyss. Now they're gone. Three times gone and never coming back. All of it. You failed. You failed me. You failed Elysium. What's Elysium? Everything. The pile and the Isolus. On the surface. The outer magnetosphere. Burning furious truth. Eight thousand years. Of written history. You really dropped the ball, Harry. 4.6 billion people. And you failed every single one of them. You really fucked up. I feel so bad. But I don't know why. Like, I have no idea what he's talking about. And yes, the voice actor is just ridiculously good. This is all just ridiculously good. Imagine playing this without the voice acting. There just wouldn't be impact, you know? It wouldn't have been anywhere near as good an experience as this. No, Harry. You were just talking to yourself. That's all you ever do. Even in your dreams. And the act is wearing thin. The spots of the disco ball fade around you. Oh my god, yes, you're right. You would have had my voice acting. That would have been terrible. Oh my god, I can't even imagine. You'll be back in those cold snakeskins in no time. Sweating up the bed. Stinky boy. Oh my god, the brain's talking to me again. I can come back from this. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours. Bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? I'm trying to solve this case, man. You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet, grinding in your head. Excuse me, I don't just do Deckard Kane. I do Policeman and Construction Guy and Green Van as well. Okay? Along with Deckard Kane. Dickard Kane's the goat. I also do a German walrus. Okay, so listen here. Listen here. You have no idea. <laughs> I can't, dude, dude, what would my Kuno sound like? Bad. <laughs> Dickard Kane. Dickard Kuno. Oh, no. No, I can't. I can't. The one thing I've never managed to do. I need to go and take some, like, lessons. I need to go and watch some goddamn TikTok videos is women's voices and kids' voices. They all end up sounding like Mickey Mouse. They all end up sounding like Mickey Mouse. I don't know how to do it. I have no idea. Like, it's like, it's like impossible. It's impossible. It's difficult, you know? It's the hardest thing. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry. This unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. This is like a male doing a female voice. This one here. Well, it's creepy as shit, but like, wait. There's another type? Oh, yes, party boy. And it's worse than the one before. Oh, God. Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes, too. So soon already. A silent alarm goes off in your head, like clockwork, barely let you sleep at all. 
Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Holy shit, that's so creepy. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, whoever did the voice acting. <sighs> they didn't pay them enough. I don't care what they paid them. It wasn't enough. It's so good. And it's all of it. Oh. Time to go to work in the shit factory. <laughs> yeah. It's the real world. The shit factory. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I feel that. God damn. My brain, huh? My brain. I'm up. I'm up. Get up. Harry. Raphael. Let's go. Good going, buddy. God, what do you want, electrochemistry? What the hell was that? She had the most beautiful dream. Uplifting, rejuvenating. Really? Because you feel even worse this morning than you did last night. Okay, okay, okay. What the hell's going on with you me? You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. No, I feel super good. That's not really true. Your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. Don't do that. Stay strong. The hangover will wear off. You don't need to keep doing this to yourself. Wait, what is speed? I need to get more of it then. Detecting is my life. No, I can't take this. I'm not going to go looking for speed. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. I'm not doing drugs, dude. Here we go. You guys knew I wouldn't. It's happening. Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. Oh. Okay, so I just missed a... What are these called? A thought? For my thought cabinet? I just missed one pertaining to drugs. Which obviously doesn't matter all that much because I don't need it. But like, I d I, I'm pretty certain I just missed one. I wonder if my partner's out already. What about this goddamn door? The door is it's closed. What who was that woman at the start, man? Oh. He wants to talk. Wheelchair ladies here again. Hello? Morning. Looks like we can get to work at once. The union muscle turned up. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. Oh. What do you mean rowdy? I mean ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCM being here. They prefer to be policed by the union. These men here. Men who drink beer for breakfast. There's talk of an armed wing of the union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for state policing. I think it's them. Kim's a morning person. I'm definitely not in this game. Personally, me. Uh, yeah, I'm a morning person. Well, enough of a morning person to get up in the morning. Why do we need to talk to Everything them? Everything points to the Duck Workers Union. The belt used for hanging him. The circumstances in Martinez. My preliminary information. Which may, of course, all be wrong. But we still need to talk to them. And it won't be easy. I'm ready. Are these men the men God told us about? Hmm. I completely forgot. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. One loose thread less to worry about. And one big problem to replace it. There's so many of them, maybe we should call for reinforcements. That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. 
Solving one murder isn't worth the conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? One more thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Yeah, streetwise. Zoom right past. Do it on your own terms. They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Let's get the body Whatever first. Side is fine by me. I feel like I must listen to reaction speed here. Just a moment. She's agitated, judging from the way she keeps pulling at the frayed edge of her blanket. Maybe she doesn't like the people either. And there's no public phones nearby? The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. Well, he appears genuinely apologetic. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. The lady is distressed. Perhaps something more upbeat might cheer her up. Wait, what suggestion? Finally! Wow! Sorry, I didn't mean to eavesdrop in your conversation. Tell me, how might I make it up to you? Hmm. Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. I'll fix it. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead too. Wait, what's wrong with the phone line? The manager was vague about it. Why would he be vague about phone problems? This is something to look into later. Ask God, maybe. I'll do it. Why did you need to use the phone? To let the young woman who's house sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and our friend Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night, but they're still missing and I haven't heard from them. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. Oh shit. Has he gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. But you have more important things to worry about. What? What's this expedition he was on? Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He and his assistant Gary are studying an extremely rare species of insect. Maybe they're cheating on her with each other. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. What could be keeping them? Okay, do you trust Gary? Oh, sweetie, it's nothing like that. Gary's as loyal as they come. I trust him with my husband's life any day. Are they in a rough neighborhood? There's a nameless old fishing village nearby, but we've never had any trouble there before. There is a lot of crime around here, isn't there? Indeed. I can't say it's the best part of town, but I wouldn't worry too much about a pair of grown men traveling together. The lieutenant doesn't want to agitate the woman. Mm. Do it. Find her husband. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. Oh shit, yeah, that's actually quite good. Accept the task. Are you sure we have time to go chasing after bug hunters just now? I did suggest we played cool, but... It's just a little side thing. We'll do it down the line. I'm honor bound. I had a premonition that this missing scientist is connected to our main case. <sighs> I sincerely doubt it. Still, I suppose it won't hurt to keep an eye out. Oh, thank you, officers. Truly, I'll, I'll be right here if you come across any sign of morale. Okay, is he a scientist? Oh, yes. A zoologist. A crypto zoologist, to be more okay, precise. Okay, what is it? It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. Oh, Kim doesn't like this. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. She's used to playing off such insults casually, but they still affect her. My apologies, ma'am. I didn't mean to undermine your hobby. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology. 
one specializing in wow. animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Okay, I mean, I dig this. It's cool, but Kim is not being very nice. Like, I don't like that at all. That's not very nice. Kim's usually very, very nice. Searching for such species called cryptids is difficult and often thankless. And frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. Cryptids... <sighs> okay. Okay. I mean, okay. 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 Cryptids. She's completely internalized her husband's struggles. They are her own. Hmm. Tell me more about moral. Looks, character, your relationship. Oh dear. I'm not sure where to begin. What does he look like? Hmm. Well, his expression is slightly grumpy, but his eyes are always bright and curious, like a small boy's. And his palms are quite coarse from all the field work, but he's quite gentle. That's not a very good description. What color hair does he have? It's always a challenge to describe the person you know best in the world. Hmm. What would I look for if I were to meet him on the street? Oh, well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame. And he has longish white hair. Usually Much better. Uncombed. You might say wild, even. The lieutenant pulls out his notebook and begins jotting down the woman's description. Jotting down or sketching? One other thing. He'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds, you know, just in case. Okay, how long have you been married? We'll be celebrating our 16th anniversary this autumn. Not the most numerically satisfying anniversary, but I like the less obvious milestones even more somehow. Okay, how'd you meet? By a dating agency, I'm ashamed to say. I was looking to get back into the scene after recovering from my accident. And he'd just divorced. We hit it off and, well, here we are. She's skipping over some important parts. Perhaps you'll find out more later. Okay. I hope I've been useful. Tell me about the rare insect. Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating. I shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. No, I want to hear about it. Well, it's a phasmid, technically, but... Oh, yeah. Here comes the interesting... Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, this one's a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here on the Insul Indian coast. Hence its name, the Insul Indian Phasmid. Perhaps you'll end up co-discovering the Phasmid with us, officers. I knew it. We're going to be chasing made-up insects with cryptozoologists. <laughs> it's not made up, officer. I can assure you. How? It's simply elusive. So much so that most establishment zoologists doubt it exists at all. Okay, why do you think it's here? Well, some teenagers making out in the reeds saw one. They they didn't know what it was, of course, but there was a brief article in a local newspaper about their encounter with a ghost insect that looks like the reeds. Gary sent us the clipping. So the clipping is all you have? Of course, most phasmid sightings turn out to be false alarms, but their description matched the Insul Indian phasmid perfectly. And they didn't even know what they were looking at. Enthusiasm has wiped the worry from her face. Her eyes sparkle behind her glasses. Okay, you're excited about this. I suppose I have something of a personal connection to the Insul Indian Phasmid. All scientists have their little hobby horses. Is it dangerous? <laughs> Not at all. Why else would it hide itself so carefully? Is it valuable? Oh, I doubt it. No one gets into cryptozoology for the money, sweetie. Does it have cool powers? Yes. It can blend in almost perfectly among the reeds. It's how it stayed hidden all these years. Centuries, even. That's not special at all. Of course it blends in. Most insects do. 
You don't even have to be a stick insect for that. Okay, what's so special about the bug then? Oh dear. I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. It is very special. Morel can explain it all much better. I wish you could hear him describe it. Then you'd understand, I'm sure. Okay, maybe you could convince her to tell you about some cool cryptids. Sometimes the most charming thing you can do is be reasonable in your requests. Tell me about just one more interesting cryptid. I suppose you could use a break and I could use a distraction. One cryptid, like you said. One. This can't turn into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. We have things to do. Okay, Kim, just one. Promise. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. Ooh, tough choice there. Oh, shit. Biggest, tiniest, most dangerous. Is that a cryptid on the pen you gave me? Are there any invisible ones? The pen. Let's do the pen. Yes. It's the kind green ape. Half war story. Half undiscovered species in the genus Homo. Yeah, dude, the writing is fantastic. And yeah, man, we're going to find Bigfoot, basically. Yes, it was reported by soldiers in South Safra during the war. The kind green ape would visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. Wow, with its saliva? Yes, it has amazing healing qualities. Some soldiers reported growing back limbs, regaining their sight. Oh, wow. Okay. Something about an undiscovered subspecies of man? Indeed, there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptids. Same taxonomic family, different genus. Which is to say the kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor <clears throat> and that evolved parallel to our own. Just like your partners. I knew it, Kim. You're not human. Ma'am, you are confusing him. <laughs> Please don't misunderstand me, either of you. Uh, Human, as it is used in everyday speech, is hardly a taxonomic category. For all intents and purposes, you can't funny. be thought of as human. Hey, Webringer, it's funny. Oh, sailites do have some distinguishing characteristics. Different advantages, if you will. Like what? Yes, advantages such as the flakier texture of sailite earwax, or so I've heard. Nothing inspires pride in one species quite like speculative evolutionary biology. Perhaps we've had enough of that for today. Oh, I can cho- well, What's the biggest one? Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. Oh, okay, okay. It'd be dishonorable. You're right. I'm glad you see it that way. Did we have anything more to do here? That's all. I could have sat here listening to bugs, man. I could have just done it. I could have sat here listening to her stories about those damn bugs for so long. This guy can, can tell I us more. You? I saw another thing. Another thing. Great. I the phone love line. Those. The phone line, man. The phone line. Yes, and the phone company is taking its sweet time sending someone to fix it. Losers. Wait. Is it true that there was foul play? That's pretty strange. It's not strange, it's inconvenient. Is, was there foul play? Who told you that? I never disclosed my sources. That would be dishonorable. Fine, yeah. It looked like someone had messed with the wiring. It was shortly after the hanging, but I don't know if it's at all related. Plenty of assholes around here who aren't murderers. If you do find out who cut the line, though, let me know so I can forward them the repair bill. Yes, and the phone c Who told you that? I want to know who you suspect. Fine, yeah. It looked like someone had messed. If you do find out who cut the... Yes? About my bill for tonight. Got the 20 real? Sure. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. Jesus, man. Hey? Hearing about all the cryptid bugs? Brings to mind 
somewhat numerous cryptid bug streamers you sometimes see here connection <laughs> you mean you mean cryptid tuesdays on lily's channel i've watched a few times actually i tend to look um but yeah she likes to draw her cryptids it's kind of nice yeah okay where do you think i can go and find that phone line Let me handle this. Huh? Detective disorientated. Are you still wondering where you are? This is Martinez, in case you've forgotten. You're the gardener. I advise you not to overstay your welcome. You lied to me, you're not a gardener. No, I am not a gardener. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. So let's get to it. Your oh, it's Elizabeth. Mrs. Hardy. You think he has information that will help you? Maybe he does. I understand now. She's the girl who went away and studied and then came back. I remember now. We spoke. Okay. That's Titus. Talk to him. But know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming. Nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest. If we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Could this be the Miss Beaufort that Easy Leo mentioned? Mm. The one Mr. Everett sent to law school? What's your role in all of this? Like I already told you, I'm a legal counselor. Do you have hearing problems? Hearing problems. Oi, are you Lizzie, Elizabeth, Miss Buford? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries. Oh, shit, and dude. And focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. Even though she has excellent control over herself, something moved behind her eyes. In the way she stands. In her face. Easy Leo told me about you. He likes to talk a lot. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. What if I talk to you and not Titus? What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. What are you going to do to me? What are we going to do to you? <laughs> oh shit, dude. The union isn't going to do anything to you. It is not a crime syndicate. It is a labor organization. Uh -huh. Goddamn right it is. If anything, it is the RCM who do things to people. But we digress. Why are you so aggressive? Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Hmm. So you were spying on us. And now you represent murder suspects. J Listen. Oh, just dock workers. Lackeys. You're a mob. Enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all. And you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. Oh god, this guy's gonna be an absolute pleasure. So ask what you came to ask. Or get back to your commanders. I like that. Good start. Let's take it a step further. Armed uprising. Shit, dude, this is terrible. Let's. I hate it already. This is where you say your bed. Oh, my God, he's going to be so unpleasant. Save. He and his men carry themselves like giants. You'll need to prove your metal to be taken seriously. Detective. Don't say anything yet. Hey, hey dipshit. You hard of hearing or some? The boss man's talking to you. Cross your arms. What, is he fucking kidding? This guy high or something? Hey, asshole, up here. We're talking to you. We are looking for Titus Hardy. Uh, 
that didn't work at all. Hey, Alistair, what's up, man? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, first we need to talk about your attitude. Wow. The RCM sent us some big dick cops. Real big dick cops. Look at them, reckless, swinging in the wind. Yeah, look at the big dick on that cop. Can't tell a dick that big what to do. Must be something in the water in Jamrock. Yeah, gave them real nice big dicks. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways. These guys really like dicks. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. These guys are so macho, they're ready to confess to first degree murder. Ask if it was them. The man hanged in the backyard, did you do it? So, you're not just here to swing your big dick. You're here for the pretty boy. A real looker, that one. Stinks like shit, too. The pretty boy. They love him, boss. Spend all day digging around in there. Can't get enough of that pretty boy smell. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Why is there a container belt around his neck? Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yeah, exactly. Because we took it from the harbor where we work. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. Uh, lawyer, you might want to restrain your client. He's confessing. We did this together. All of us. Until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. Okay, so I'm getting the idea already now. They didn't do shit. They took a dead body they found lying in a damn alleyway that had been shot. And they decided they could use it for their own agenda. Because they didn't even have to get their hands dirty. All they did was hang up a body in a tree. And it got their message across. Quote unquote message. So... They pretending to be all macho macho. Yeah, we did this. They didn't do shit. They didn't do shit. There's a catch hidden somewhere. He didn't confess so that you could take them all away. It's too simple. But there's a catch. There is no catch. These seven honest men have all equally come forth to tell you what happened. So that you don't waste any more of your time. Let's see if we can catch them off guard. How does the bullet in his head factor into this? Huh? There was a bullet in the dead man's brain. Why was it there if you hanged him? How the fuck do I know? Anyone could have shot him. Target practice, maybe. He's tight-lipped suddenly. This line of questioning is over. You got the cause of death already? Hanging. If there's any post-mortem trauma, it's your problem. This will not turn into a cross-examination. This was a good move. Also, notice how Titus doesn't like her much. Especially when she's calling the shots. Ah, no remorse? How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? Or send them to reunion to rot? For 20 years? For life? Honestly, I drink so much, I can't really remember anyone I've sent behind bars. These were all bad peoples, criminals, scum of the earth. Rest assured, lawman. None worse than our guy. He got what was coming to him. Who called the shots? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Okay. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A shadow of a smirk passes her lips. I don't have to. One of them was more complicit than the others. No, but seriously, who calls the shots around here? Uh, let's address her. Listen, no, listen, no. He's gonna because he's gonna be prideful and reply immediately. <laughs> who do you fucking think does? Oh, 
Oh, shit. So right here, Elizabeth calls the shots, but Everard Clare is the one who, who's like, uh... Hmm. It's gonna come out... It's gonna come out that uh, it was my gun that shot him, probably. I don't think two is gonna work. It's just gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna like, he's just gonna lash out, man. Isn't he just gonna lash out? But five might make him feel like demasculinized or whatever nonsense. That might make him feel uh, sort of inferior, you know? So maybe five is also pretty bad. Hey! Inspector, what's up, man? Yeah, dude, I am in for a treat. This has all been so fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna say it's Everard Clear. You keep him the fuck out of this. We have autonomy. It's all on us. Everard runs the union. I run the hardy boys when titus hardy says he runs the hardy boys he means that in an administrative capacity on that night everyone acted as one man oh oh is that so when did this occur you don't have to keep answering his questions i know lizzie relax we killed him last sunday night seemed like a good way to end the week how long had you known the victim? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, ask. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Shit, I haven't seen the Pines people yet. By the Pines cow, you mean the representative for Wild Pines? The shipping company you are striking against? No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Why did you kill him? Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out of line in my town. So he was a mercenary? And he stepped out of line. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. Oh. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenin written all over him. Ex Oranese Special Forces. Huh. A live grenade right here in our bar. Tell us this guy. This one has a special gripe with him coming here. And if he was in the bar, we need to find the lady that was here before. Because she's obviously seen it, because this guy that's here right now is useless. I can't prove it. But I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. How do you even know his special forces? Because one night he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm Oranese, goddamn special forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all. What? Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some Oranese paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did, right there. Like some okay. kind of animal. What did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. What? There's a slight unease in him, suddenly. He regrets mentioning the rape. Oh shit, there you go, it's out now. Kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here.
Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started to come in here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid karaoke right there on the stage. I want to do karaoke. And who is the girl? I bet it's the one that God likes. You grab someone? Yeah. This girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl. Young. Gets into the second verse of Love a Lake. The fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt. Why don't you show me your cunt? Then he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle. Doesn't even fall down. Wait, is this the same girl? Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? Who do you rape then? This is very serious. No, you're not getting a name. That's a Martinez matter. I'm not discussing it with you clowns. Despite the stonewalling, you can slip one more question in. Okay. Who did he? Titus, do not answer. You have been forthcoming enough. Fuck off, Carl. She's gone through enough without you harassing her too. She doesn't need more embarrassment. What are you talking about? Embarrassment. If someone has been sexually assaulted, we need to... What you need? Is to get the fuck out of my face. I've had enough of explaining myself to you fucks. He's dead. It's done. As you can see, these men can only take so much baseless scrutiny. I'm doing my best to keep the situation civil, but... It's true. She was the only thing holding him back. How did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? Have think, yo. Yeah, man. Honestly, I don't know what to believe here, but. It seems obvious and apparent that we need to find whoever the girl the is. The autopsy showed there were no ligature marks. His hands were not tied. Can you explain that? The lieutenant goes in for the leg sweep. Titus does not see it coming. Um, we... Look, I'm not gonna play 20 questions with you, capo. I'll say it again. We killed him. She's covering for someone. Yeah. I knock him out. They're all covering for someone. Came up behind him and clapped him in the back of the head. He went down like a sack of sand. That's right, lawman. And then we hang the fuck. Mr. Tats, what did you use to knock him out? My fucking elbow copper. Summer unboxing a style. Where did this take place? Right fucking here. Eugene already told you that the fuck had started coming to our bar. Yeah, man. Weren't you listening? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, They aren't quite what they seem here, are they? Titus is solid as a rock. And so are a few others. But... Who's cracking under the pressure? <laughs> this one. He's sweating profusely, difficulty breathing. They smartly kept him out of the conversation. Hey, you! No. He looks up startled. Of course he's having trouble breathing. Just look at how fucking fat he is. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Fuck okay. off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. Okay, let's see. Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of twig. There's something you're not telling me. And fuck you too, copper. Picking on Angus like this. We're done with this schoolyard shit. And just so you know, he doesn't have trouble breathing. His all muscle comment wasn't sarcastic. He's genuinely trying to look out for Angus. 
This one is a stone wall. You won't get more out of them about the night of the murder. Like what, copper? Okay. What are we gonna do now? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent-a-cop is gonna hear from us. Real law officials. Whoa. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. Whoa. rent a -cop. So that's what this is about. He doesn't see you as his equals. Forget about their games. You've mapped out the characters. Reading the footprints in the yard should be easier now. You still haven't explained the bullet. You still on about that bullet? A bullet in a hangman's head. You're right, Copper. That is mighty curious. Indeed. Mighty. How did it get there? Well, there are so many bullets in the world, and so many heads. <sighs> I guess it's only logical. At some point, one of them bullets had to end up in one of them heads. It's bound to happen again, you know? Holy shit. Just statistically speaking, of course. I'm gonna ask you again, but why was this show the bullet in the victim's head? Wow! He's got it in a real evidence bag and all! Why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you what happened. I think the hanging was a cover-up for the shooting. You know what I think? I think he was shot in the head as a kid. And his brain grew around the bullet. Hmm. Around the bullet, man. That's a good one. They're only pretending to enjoy this. Beneath the act, they don't like you knowing this. Did you guys shoot him? Shit! I probably did shoot him. I was drunk last night. You guys know me when I'm drunk. Yeah, Glenn likes to shoot his guns when he's drunk. Better hope he stays sober. No, he meant before he was hanged. Did you shoot him before you hanged him? Before? After? During? This is getting ridiculous. They told you what happened. Stop wasting your time. Never been worried in my life, lawman. It's not like he blew it wide open, but there's a little crack in there somewhere. Scan the room. I think this we're gonna have to come back to, man. Like, we have that authority check there. But we're gonna have to come back to that because it just doesn't make sense. Like, with this, there's so much missing there. But now we're gonna have to re... basically... readdress everyone here. I don't know, man. There's so much. There's so much. Huh. 